Hey everybody, it is Ariel, and today I am talking to you guys all about my adult onset food allergies, which are peanut allergies and a form of oral allergy syndrome. So the impetus behind finally making this video for you guys and for the world is because we have Halloween coming up, yay! And I love this time of year, and uh, one of the best parts of Halloween for me is the invention of this awesome project called the Teal Pumpkin Project. And the idea is that teal is the color of food allergy awareness and of the nonprofit fair. So the Teal Pumpkin Project is where you paint a pumpkin teal and you hand out, you can hand out candy, but you also hand out non-food treats to kids. And what's awesome about this is it makes everybody feel included for Halloween, and it's great for kids that cannot eat candy safely. There's lots of different food allergies, and it's awesome to be able to provide non-food treats to kids. So if you guys want to paint a pumpkin teal this year and join me and thousands of other people celebrating the Teal Pumpkin Project and Halloween in this way, there is a video, I will link it down below, all about how to make your very own teal pumpkin for just a couple bucks. And I got everything from a dollar store, so really, does not break the bank. So the main purpose of this video is in my channel and I have talked all about my food allergies and or not all about them I've just mentioned that I have food allergies and I've never really gone into deal, detail about it and I've been able to find a whole lot of information on the internet or on YouTube about adult onset food allergies. Um, I actually don't know how rare or not adult onset food allergy is but that's what happened to me, and so I wanted to be able to share with the world my experience and see if there's anyone else out there that had something happen to them that's kind of like this. So this all started for me. Um, so adult onset food allergies, as far as I know, occur most commonly when there's some kind of big genetic shift in your life, and for most people that is puberty. So I grew up my entire life with not a single food allergy, didn't have any problem. I knew kids that had peanut allergies, but I never had any issues. I ate whatever I wanted all the time. It was fabulous. And when I started, um, I guess puberty, so it was around like eighth grade or so, I started having some funny reactions to things. And even this was, I don't know, maybe, yeah, maybe like 15 years ago when this started, and even 15 years ago there was not the same kind of food allergy awareness then that there is now. So I went through quite a journey to figure out what the heck was going on with my body. So what it started as is a fruit allergy, believe it or not. So there's a type of allergy called oral allergy syndrome. What it means is if you are very allergic to pollen, like in the springtime and you know, that kind of thing, Sometimes what can happen is when you eat foods that have that pollen in them, your body thinks that the pollen that is in the air is the same thing that you're eating, and you react in your mouth and in your throat, and like I get itchy in my ears and things like that. So that is actually pretty common. I developed, unfortunately, over time a severe version of that, and that's extremely rare. I guess only like 1% of people that have oral allergy syndrome actually do develop a severe form of this, and so every time I was exposed to fruits and even vegetables, uh, certain like types of fruits and vegetables, I would have full-blown anaphylaxis. Now there is information about anaphylaxis and all about what that is and how to recognize the signs and symptoms, and if you're at risk for anaphylaxis, all in the links down below. So what started happening for me is, again, it was around eighth grade, and I remember I started having reactions to apples. That was the first thing I ever reacted to, is I would eat an apple and my mouth would get really itchy. And no one believed me, like they thought I was a hypochondriac or something. Everyone in my family was like, no, you're crazy, I don't know what you're talking about. And so <laughs> over time, the more times I was exposed to it, the more intense the reaction would get. So to the point where finally I was in summer camp, I remember I was away at sleepaway camp, and I ate like a peach or something completely different than an apple, but <clears throat> I hadn't had a peach in a long time, maybe like a year, they weren't in season. So I finally ate like a peach at summer camp, and all of a sudden my throat started feeling really funny. I didn't know it at the time, I've had asthma my whole life, but I wasn't diagnosed with asthma, that's a whole nother ball game there. Wasn't diagnosed until I was in like high school with asthma, because my pediatrician never tested me for it. Um, but anyways, I started feeling like my lungs were tight and my throat felt really weird and I was having itchiness in the mouth but my lips felt like big and it kind of felt a little bit like when you go to the dentist and you have a filling and you have Novocaine and like everything just feels really really big even though it's not. 
that's how it felt for me. It wasn't numb, it was just big, itchy, weird. Very weird, especially for someone that's never had like a full-blown allergic reaction before. Very strange feeling as an adult, you know, I was a kid still, but we call it adult onset because I was older when it happened. So I go to the nurse and I'm like, yeah, this weird thing is happening. And she's like, oh my gosh, you're having an allergic reaction. Did you know you're allergic to peaches? And I'm like, I've been having reactions to some fruits, but I didn't know it was an allergy. And she's like, how come you didn't write down in your medical record you have an allergy? And I was like, I didn't know I had an allergy. No one told me that I had an allergy. Everyone's just been like, you know, it's whatever. I don't even know what people said. They were just like, oh, there's no way. There's not such thing as a fruit allergy, you're crazy. So anyway, so I'm reacting and she's like, where's your EpiPen? And I'm like, what? I don't have an EpiPen. I don't know what you're talking about. So she winds up calling the paramedics, <laughs> which was crazy to me. And everyone around me is like freaking out. And I'm like, what is everyone so freaked out about? Because I had no idea it was happening. I didn't know I was having a severe reaction. I had no clue. So I get there and the paramedics do the same thing. They're like, how long have you had this allergy for? Um, does this happen every time you eat peaches? And I'm like, I don't know what you people are talking about. So again, the reason why I'm making this video too is like if you have adult onset food allergies, it's a very strange feeling when all of a sudden you can't eat things in your life. So that's what happened to me. They're like, where's your EpiPen? We need to use your EpiPen. And I'm like, I don't have one. I don't know what you're talking about. So what was good is I think they gave me like a bunch of Benadryl. I remember being very sleepy. <laughs> they gave me a bunch of Benadryl and they basically, they didn't take me to the hospital. They just kind of like, I mean, this was like kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So, cause that's where I went to sleep waking up. So I just kind of hung out in the infirmary for a while and they just kind of like watched me and made sure everything was okay. And then from there, she's like, we're gonna say that you're allergic to peaches. Please don't ever eat a peach again. And I was like, wow, that's a big bummer, but okay. So I go about my life. So later on that summer, I go to visit my amazing aunt who happens to be a nurse practitioner. And I was telling her all about this experience. And again, at this point, I adore my parents, but they still had no idea what was going on. I, t I told them all about what had been happening to me, and they were just like, okay, well, just don't eat peaches again. <laughs> so I was like, all right. So I tell my aunt all about this, and she's like, you have an allergy. You need to have an EpiPen. And I was like, really? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to prescribe you one because she's a nurse practitioner. So she's the first person ever, thank God for her, that prescribed me an EpiPen. I go about my life, and later on down that road, I keep reacting to weirder and weirder things. I start reacting to cherries and then to lemons, uh, limes, um, basically every tree fruit that's out there, plums, uh, again, peaches, apples, anything like that, I just start reacting to. And then I start reacting to vegetables. So I just keep reacting to all these fruits and vegetables. And um, we're not like big nut eaters in my family. So I wasn't eating nuts around this time. But I do remember it wasn't until the next spring when we're at Easter. And this whole time I still haven't seen an allergist. Everyone's just like, okay, well, if you've had a reaction, just don't eat it anymore. And at this point, they're not like full-blown anaphylaxis reactions or anything like that. They're like, some of them are more scary than others, but they just tend to be itchy, itchy mouth, itchy throat, like asthma symptoms. So, so we just keep going. <laughs> this is all crazy. If you ever have any symptoms of an allergy, please go get checked out by a doctor. I don't know what took us so long, but anyways, we just keep going. And that Easter, I remember we were driving home from Easter dinner and my aunt had given me Jordan almonds and I ate one in the car and all of a sudden my throat just felt like it was closing. It was so scary. And I remember telling my parents, I feel like I'm breathing through a straw. Like, I don't feel like I can breathe well. Like, this isn't good. And so they're like, should we pull off to the side of the road? Do we need to find a hospital? Um, eventually, so at this point I'm carrying Benadryl with me in my purse with me at all times because I just keep reacting to things. So I take Benadryl and after like 30 minutes, it finally goes away and I'm okay. But it was after that point we were like, all right, something's going on here. We can't just like keep pretending this is nothing. So I go and see an allergist and the allergist does the same thing to me. He's like some little ho-punk allergist. Like I do live near Boston, but for some reason we didn't go to Boston for this stuff. Please people, go to a good doctor. So I go to some like random little doctor out in the suburbs that has like not had any experience with this at all. And again, same thing. He's like, oh, it's probably just like this oral allergy syndrome. I don't even think he called it that. He didn't name it. He's just like, oh, you're just like, having these reactions and you're probably fine, but let's do a skin test. So they do a skin test and it's positive for a whole bunch of tree nuts and peanuts. And he's like, when's the last time you had peanut butter or peanuts? And I was like, I just don't eat a lot of peanut products. Like I just, 
I literally hadn't in a very long time. I, it wasn't on purpose, it's just we don't, we didn't eat a lot of peanut butter. Like I was in, at this point I'm like a freshman in high school and yeah, we just, I don't know, we just didn't eat a lot of peanut butter. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I'm not much of a sweet tooth so I wasn't eating like Snickers or anything like, like I don't know, I just wasn't exposed to peanuts. So he's like, well, you had a positive skin test, so there's a, you know, but but with peanuts, there's very good likelihood that people have a false positive skin test reaction to peanuts. So you're probably not allergic to peanuts. And I'm like, phew, okay, that's great. So, so I remember that year was the year that I told our school nurse officially about my allergies. Um, Again, this doctor was like, I don't think you're gonna have anaphylaxis, you're probably fine. Everyone at this point was like, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. So, <laughs> I mean, which is great, maybe 15 years ago, but kind of wish someone was a little more on top of things. But anyways, again, lack of awareness back then. Let's all bring awareness to this, people. So, so everyone's like, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. So I give the nurse my EpiPen, and she's like, what are you allergic to? And I list a bunch of fruits and vegetables and like, and you know, um, and nuts and peanuts, and I said, but I'm probably not allergic to them, it's just like a precaution. So we keep going, and then I actually transferred high schools in junior year, which so nothing happened sophomore year. Again, I kept having these little reactions to things. At this point, I kind of just stopped eating fruits and vegetables, but I didn't know for a fact that I wasn't allergic to. So for example, I've always joked, everything you can put on a burger, I'm not allergic to. So that would be like lettuce, tomatoes, onions, all that good stuff um, I'm not allergic to. So things like that that I was eating on a regular basis, I continued to eat because I knew it was safe, but like new foods and foods I hadn't eaten in a while, I just had stopped eating. I was so scared. It sucked so bad every time I had a reaction. And again, this was not full-blown anaphylaxis, but they were scary reactions and I did not like them. Uh, so finally I'm going into my junior year. I also at this time finally transfer like pediatricians. I stopped seeing a pediatrician and see like a general practitioner. And they finally diagnosed me with asthma because I was in the cross country team and I'm like, every time I run, I just get really short of breath and I don't know what it is. And they test me and they're like, yeah, you have asthma. Good times. So anyways, so now I'm finally diagnosed with asthma, which was great. Whole nother ball game with that. Um, and they're like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna call this an allergy. You know, have you seen an allergist? And I said, yeah, but he didn't think it was a big deal. So this is, and now I'm going into summer of my sophomore year. I am about to transfer high schools into my junior year. Going into summer of my sophomore year, I finally decided, and my parents finally decided, we said, okay, we really need to see like an allergist. I just kept reacting to things and I was like putting my foot down being like, I can't do this anymore. Like, I need to know what I'm allergic to. I need to see someone about this. I need some solutions here. So I finally get an appointment at Boston Children's Hospital, which is an amazing, literally world-renowned hospital in our area. And that was a completely different experience going there as opposed to going to a little allergist. They took me, I mean, again, this was 15 years ago and I still hadn't had an anaphylactic reaction. So um, my doctor was still very low key, but they did take me much more seriously. And they were like, okay, well, let's do some testing. And I specifically remember they did skin testing with fresh fruits and vegetables um, because in oral allergy syndrome, if you cook something for long enough, like a fruit or vegetable, not nuts and peanuts, but a fruit or vegetable for long enough, it actually denatures the protein molecule and your body doesn't recognize it. So I can have like blueberry pie and things of that nature. <laughs> um, but anyways, so, so I remember we're doing skin testing and he's like, this is gonna be negative. No one's allergic to fill in the blank here do the test and I'm allergic to it. So we're doing skin testing and like everything is coming out positive and he's like, okay, well you're clearly allergic to some things, you're reacting to things, um, just like avoid these foods. And I'm like, all right, sounds good. Gave me a refill on the EpiPen, called it a day. So I go into my junior year of high school. The nurse there was amazing, by the way. And she took me the most seriously out of anyone. And she's like, you're at risk for anaphylaxis. Please don't eat any of these foods. If there's any chance you have a reaction, this could be very, very bad because you've had so many leading up to this that the next reaction you have could be the one that triggers anaphylaxis. So please just be safe. So she was amazing. That's the first speech I've heard about like, be safe, please. <laughs> Everyone was so nonchalant about this. So, um, and then, so the funny thing is, I guess if you have oral allergy syndrome, you can also react to some herbs and supplements. So this is my first experience with an EpiPen ever, guys. So what happened is, 
Turns out I'm allergic to echinacea, which is an herb or a supplement. Uh, it was fall of my junior year of high school, and I was starting to feel run down and kind of sick, and I'm like, oh, I heard echinacea is really good for your immune system, I'm gonna take that. I take that, I'm at school like an hour later, because I took it in the morning with breakfast. An hour later, I start feeling really funny. And this time it feels different than every other time. It's like, literally they say sense of dread, that is 100% true. I just have this sense of dread wash over me and I'm like, something feels different. My throat starts closing up, I start having asthma, it's bad. I'm in math class, I specifically remember I raised my hand and asked to go to the nurses. I don't know why I didn't just like get up and go. But, so I go to the nurses and I tell her what's going on. She listens to my lungs and she's like, you are having an anaphylactic reaction right now. We need to use the EpiPen. And I'm like, no, I don't want to use an EpiPen. Like, it sounds so scary. Um, but she's like, lay down, you'll be fine. Here we go. And she's like, bing, bang, boom. Before I even knew it, she's using the EpiPen. I can like feel my heart beating out of my chest, but I feel so much better so fast. She calls an ambulance and they transfer me over to Boston Children's and from there, things started getting very serious. They started taking me very seriously because they're like, okay, you had an anaphylactic reaction. We don't, to an herb. Like, this is not something we're gonna mess around with here. Um, we're gonna call this an actual allergy, all that stuff. So this is when things really started progressing. And then from there, we just kind of, uh, we're like, again, still at this point, I had been avoiding peanuts, but I didn't know I was allergic to peanuts until senior year. So all of that resolves, I'm fine. They give me Benadryl and steroids and all that good stuff. So then <laughs> senior year of high school, this poor nurse, she probably used EpiPens more on me than anyone. Senior year of high school, I'm in this little private school that's amazing, but it's this little tiny private school. And again, food allergy awareness was not quite where it is today. So I'm in the cafeteria and every single day there was literally a snack time because we were just that cute at private school. Um, so it was like 10 o'clock and there was like snack time before lunch, which lunch was at like 12 or one or something. So every day at snack time I would always get a chocolate chip cookie. It was like my thing. I'd get a chocolate chip cookie and like a bagel and like that was my snack, big snack. But yeah, I usually like didn't have much breakfast. So anyway, so I get my chocolate chip cookie and I remember I take, I, I like was saving it. <clears throat> So I was in English class after my uh, snack break and I remember taking a bite of the chocolate chip cookie and I'm like, I swear this tastes like peanuts. Like if you guys know what I'm talking about, peanut has a very strong flavor. So, and smell, and like you can tell right away if something's peanut. So they didn't label it, but that day they had made peanut butter chocolate chip cookies and they looked exactly the same as chocolate chip cookies. So I had no idea. Again, little town, little school, new food allergy awareness there. Uh, I think I was the only kid allergic to peanuts in the school because I know I'm the only one that reacted that day, but so anyway, so I eat one bite, I smell the peanut butter, and I immediately, I'm like a little nervous, but I'm like, okay, well, they said I'm probably not allergic to peanuts, probably a false positive, whatever. Hanging out there, and then all of a sudden, waymo, I am feeling my throat, I feel my chest, the sense of dread, the itchy mouth, the swollen lips, I feel my tongue swelling up, I'm like, can I go to the nurse yet again? I don't know why I didn't just run to the nurse's office. Luckily, very small school, so it was like right across the hall. I go over, tell her what happened, wham, EpiPen to the hospital, all that good stuff. So what has happened in my life since then? Because it's been about 10 years since I was in high school. So basically, the gist of that, um, and then after that, I went back to Children's and I actually had a different doctor this time, and they were like, all right, we're calling this a peanut allergy, a tree nut allergy, and they tested me for a whole bunch of fruits and vegetables. And so at this point, there's only about 10 fruits and vegetables that I do not react to at all. Awareness, guys, if you start feeling funky or having reactions to things, even if you're an adult, if you're a kid, if you're an adult, you didn't grow up with this stuff, it can happen to you. You can go from eating peanuts as a kid to having full-blown anaphylaxis as an adult. So ever since uh, <laughs> high school, unfortunately, I've averaged like a reaction every like year and a half. I'm super, super careful, but we've had a couple freak accidents. Like, you know, I ate ice cream and it had like, an almond sliver in it and um, just other like really bizarro reactions that you just wouldn't expect. A family member cooking rice that had carrots in it and we didn't know because it was like shredded up. Um, so anyways, I use allergy cards when I'm at restaurants. I do go out to restaurants. I still live my life. I love eating out. I go to restaurants that I really, really trust. Uh, that's important. And I have allergy cards that explain all of my food allergies and how to safely prepare my food.
I'm blessed to live in Massachusetts where we have food allergy laws and safety regarding restaurants and going out to eat and stuff like that. So thank God for that. And uh, so far everything has been going super, super well. And I'm just so grateful that we figured out what's going on. And knock on wood, I haven't used an EpiPen in about a year. So, so I'm really happy. And um, you can definitely still have an amazing life even with all your crazy allergies if you have them. And if you're a kiddo out there and you have a food allergy, don't worry about it, you can still live an amazing life. Just remember when you're dating, make sure you tell people about your food allergies because the other freak reaction I had once was my husband uh, back in college before we were married. He had just eaten trail mix and I forget why, I think I like aced a test and I was so excited and like ran up and like kissed him without asking if like it was okay to kiss him about my food allergies and I had a reaction from that. So you can have an allergic reaction from kissing somebody. So please, if you're dating or you might kiss somebody, please just make sure that you are safe for yourself and don't have an allergic reaction because you really like somebody. It's just not worth it, guys. So it's hilarious because if people are around us, you'll hear, you know, my husband and I, like we'll share a drink. And I'll always ask him like, are you safe? Or he'll say, I'm not safe. Like. That's always what we say, or like we don't ever kiss on the lips unless we know for a fact that it's safe to do so. Um, but we're still super affectionate. You know, like he kisses me on the forehead and on the cheek and we hold hands and hug and everything like that. So it doesn't mean that you can't have a wonderful romantic relationship. It just means please be safe out there, guys. If you go on dates or you like someone or someone goes to kiss you, please just, you know, take those precautions. But that's my public service announcement about that. And, um, other than that, guys, there's some great resources down below to learn all about anaphylaxis, food allergies, and everything related to that. I would love for all of you guys to please think about making a teal pumpkin this year. I made a glitter teal pumpkin and it turned out so cute. Please consider making one and handing out non-food treats. Some examples are stickers, glow sticks. I even found online on sale these emoji blow up beach balls that are latex free and they're super, super cute. So like you can give out whatever you want, obviously within reason. Um, dollar stores have excellent selections. Um, there's a company called like Oriental Trading that has a bunch of cute little toys. Uh, even like Walmart and Target, their dollar sections have awesome stuff there. So just consider that because I did this last year and the year before and I was trick or treat at my brother's house because he's got little kids and it's so much fun to trick or treat with little kids. And every year we've had at least a couple kids come up to us and I have a big sign on the front <clears throat> they gave me permission to but I put a big sign on the front door that says teal pumpkin project here and I have my little pumpkin on like where all the other pumpkins are that they put out every year and um, and it says like non-food treats um, offered here like please ask if you want a non-food treat um, if you have an allergy etc and every year I have a couple kids that um, that you know use a toy instead and I'm gonna get all emotional because I'm pregnant right now for those of you who didn't know um, but I remember Last year, um, we had a really emotional moment because a dad actually came up and like thanked us and thanked my brother and sister-in-law because they said that um, it's so hard because they have a little, because their daughter has a peanut allergy and it's so hard every year because they let her go to her treating but like they don't let her keep any of the candy. And so like it was just um, a really cool experience for them because they finally got to let her keep something from trick or treating and they just said like, it just was really special for them. Oh, freaking pregnancy hormones. But anyways, and um, so it's really amazing and you really can make an impact on a little kid's life. And so anyway, sorry for the ridiculously long video, but it is a crazy long story. So that's it for now, guys. Does anyone else out there have any experience with adult onset allergies? Do you have a food allergy? How do you deal with it? How do you date? Do you ever have an issue with like kissing your significant other, etc.? And let me know if you're participating in the Teal Pumpkin Project and rate your town that you are doing it in below. And yeah, that's it for now, guys. And if you'd like, subscribe. Bye.